It is coming up to 10 minutes to nine, more than 30 years after he appeared on, first appeared on our screens. Alan Partridge is back with his third memoir. I'm just looking at the picture um, over your shoulder there. That's what you call him. He knows uh, how to strike a pose, doesn't he? That's a good suit <laughs> for television, isn't it? What colour is that? Oh, got your eye on that, have you? A wow. Safari suit, I think that's what that is. North Norfolk's finest broadcaster, of course, played by actor and writer Steve Coogan, who is going to join us shortly. But first, there's always time for a little bit of classic partridge. <laughs> Steve joins us now. Good morning. Good morning. Um, third final memoir? Um, I'll probably keep going until either myself or Alan dies. So, but I'll probably die before Alan, yeah. I think. How's that going to work? Well, because I, I, because I won't, because I won't, I won't, I probably won't kill him off, you know, because he's sort of too, too sort of ingrained in me now that, uh, yeah, people, people stopped asking me if I'll, if I'll kill him off now, so. Yeah. Um, do, how do you feel when people kind of Really, they see you and they see Alan. Well, some Are you people comfortable with it now. I, I don't. I, I remember about thirty something years ago, the guy a guy I was working with, uh, Patrick Marber. Uh, we did one radio show on BBC in London, and uh, uh, and it, it, it was called Knowing Me, Knowing You, and it was a talk show. And it went very well, and he said uh, he said this this program you recorded tonight is going to change your life and one and, and in about five years time people will be shouting aha at you across the street and I, I remember thinking oh, that would be fantastic uh, so be careful what you wish for um so so yes it's uh, it's something i've sort of uh, As, uh, i'm that, used to now that call out the aha mm. that people do presumably quite a lot has it ever happened in a really inappropriate place where like somewhere where i don't know where in your like, you're doing personal things, and then it, someone does that. It must have happened. Well, no, but someone did... Um, in a men's urinal, a man tried to shake my hand, uh, you know. <laughs> nice. And uh, I, I once had a, a note pushed What did under... you say to him? Well, I said, uh, no, because... Well, I won't tell you what I said to him, uh, okay. but it's not, not suitable. <laughs> no, no. Sort of... What was the note? You said I, there was I said a... someone passed me a note under a toilet cubicle once to sign. To, 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 can you sign this autograph? Pushed it under the toilet. They'd obviously spotted you, they'd spotted you yeah, going, going in. Yeah, the loop. And loop. followed you in. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, there you go. That's the downside of fame sometimes. Well, you know, it's, that's the fame tax. And yeah. tell me, now, when you saw that clip a moment ago, you were saying that was a very long time ago. Just do the dates for us. When, when, is, it thir is it 30 years now? Well, it's, it's on, radio, on television, it's 1994, so next year will be 30 years yeah. since I, uh, I was on... BBC television screens as, as Alan. Uh, and, but, it, I mean, we started on radio two years before that, so it's 31 years old. Mm. And was <clears> there a time... I know you said you're going you're gonna to go with it now all the way through until, uh, you know, either one of you dies, probably you, that then... Uh, does that mean you've always loved it? As in, have there been times when you've thought, do you know what, it's too much of me, you know, it's taking up too much yeah. of my time, I want to do other it, things. Did you leave it well, for a point? Yes, I was worried about being typecast years ago because, of course, you know, when, when you, the... the, the the curse of being very successful with something is people can't take you seriously as anything else. So, uh, for a while, I tried to move away from it. And then... And I did various different projects. I did a film called 24-Hour Party People that sort of... that meant I started to, to do things that were more... that went in a different direction uh, with, with film directors and uh, diff working with different people. But eventually, uh, you know... And then I did uh, the film Philomena about 10 years ago now, which really changed everything for me and allowed me to, to write more dramas. And what I do these days, I write a lot of drama and I act in a lot of different things. And so I'm, I'm, it makes me more... I'm more prepared to go back to Alan now because of that success. So I'm, I'm more comfortable with do it. Do you think... Have you always thought of Alan as uh, more monster than likeable or as any of those things? Because a lot of people look at him very differently, don't they? Some people think... He is, horre he is hor genuinely horrendous, and others think he's quite likeable. And, well, and... I, th I think years ago we used to sort of... It, it felt a bit like we were sort of mocking him as this sort of idiot, but now, um, like the sort of... Uh, uh, like the, 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 the Emperor's New Clothes, occasionally with some things that Alan is able to say things that other people can't say but secretly think, um, and that's why it's quite in in enjoyable. But I think he's a flawed... Put it's more... You know, he's trying to be, be get up to speed with all the kind of... Uh, Post woke politics. He's trying. To, he's trying to keep up uh, with sort of current thinking. So uh, it, it, now he's just a filter through which and it, popular culture. You can just sort of filter it through that and sort of see how society's changing through Alan. So he's he's good and he's bad, like like everyone. Do you feel when you're and I'm thinking about what you're writing and you starred in obviously the Reckoning recently, which came had really good reviews, mm. critical acclaim. Yeah. Your your performance as well as the actual writing. 
Um, there are risks associated with something like The Reckoning. And I wonder how much risk there is or you feel there is kind of bringing Alan back. Again. Well, you, you have to keep those things apart. You know, comedy is very important. You know, people need comedy. And the, that old cliche about laughter being the best medicine is absolutely true. You know, it is uh, people, you know, uh, sometimes you see people um, at wakes and, and they'll, be, they'll be laughing about the person who's gone because it's a way of sort of, sort of healing process. So it, it's very important. But it's important to keep those things very separate too. You know, I do do drama and that requires a certain tone. And I do comedy, and, and that requires a different term. But they're both e equally important, I think. Were you surprised at the response to The Reckoning? And how, how... how I think worried is the wrong word, but how aware were you of how controversial the subject well, I is? Well, it was a gamble, because, yeah. you know, uh, The Reckoning was you know, about a very troubled period for the media, um, the BBC and the, the, and the press media as well, who failed to bring him to account. Um, so it, it, it was... Uh, we knew it was a risky uh, thing to do, but um, we did it with the, a lot of the survivors, you know, we did a lot of research. We did the process of it was very, very careful. Um, and I knew, from a personal point of view, as an actor, I knew it was a, a bit of a gamble. I knew there'd be some consternation about me because of my background in comedy, uh, that it would, might be inappropriate. Um, so I was aware of that, but I thought, uh, you know, uh, that the, I could, you know, with a, with a fair wind, I could do justice to the do whole project. you feel project. you can breathe easier? I yeah. do, yeah, yeah, because the reaction has been very good. In fact, the, the, the public, in particular, have been uh, pretty universal in how good... And I've had letters from victims uh, okay. who've written saying how important it was and how it's... It, they're really, they, they were worried, but now they realise it's actually good because it's sort of put it on the map and allowed people to talk about it and uh, stop it happening again. Given the subject matter, it almost feels like a bit of a trite question to ask about how playing it affected you, because there are much more important issues about how it affected real people in the real of world. Of course, yeah. But when you play a character like that, and anyone who's seen it will know, I mean, they're very sinister. And I, I, how does it affect you? How, how easy is it to step away from doing those scenes and playing that role? Um, and it, I know you're an actor, it, it's well, a given it, that it, that's what it, you do for a job. It's, I was very pleased the, la the last day of filming, so I thought, I'll never have to dress as him again. Didn't you shave uh, your head? I had to shave my head during the whole process. That's how long ago it was. It's been <laughs> quite long now. But uh, uh, thankfully it grew back. Um, yeah, I had to shave my head for, like, two or two, three months, just because it, they said, if you shave your head... Because the, it, the makeup took two or three hours if, when I was playing him as an old man. And so I... Uh, you know, they said, if you shave your head, it'll save you an hour in the chair. And I thought, an hour... One hour less being that person would be, uh, you know, is, is welcome. So, um... But, but you're, you're right, Charlie. The, 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 there was... Uh, it was very difficult uh, sometimes. I mean, there were a lot of young actors playing uh, victims, uh, young women, and I was very cognizant between takes to, to, to be Steve Coogan again as quickly as possible once they said cut, uh, because... It's, it's, it's a, a strange atmosphere. So I would have very ordinary conversations with these, these young women about what they were studying at college, and, and I'd, I'd sort of jump in and jump out of it. I wouldn't... I wouldn't uh, I'm not a method actor. I didn't have to wander around as him at lunchtime. You know. Well, I mean, it, it's an extraordinary performance. It, it, it really is. And uh, I can understand from what you said about the, the sort of challenge and the risk attached to it. Uh, Partridge, of course, is back. Uh, lovely to see you here this morning. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for coming on the sofa and talking to us. Pleasure. Him. Uh, Steve's book, Alan Partridge, Big Beacon, is out now. What do you think Alan would say about the new set that we're in here? Not so new now. He'd like... He'd like... I mean, this is his home. This is where... This is where his... This is... He's at his most zen when he's in this space. He'd be in happy. In front of the here. camera. Yeah, very... This would be like a warm bath. <laughs> Headlines are coming up.